This video is brought to you by Incogni. Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. So first up today, I wanna show you guys something. Yes, Tesla stock is up almost 6% on the day so far. However, what I wanted to show you is this candle right here. This is a 30 minute chart and this was Thursday of last week. Tesla stock did actually dip to around $700 per share, but within that 30 minutes, it was bought up all the way back to around 750. This is going to come into play later in this video, so just remember this one candle. So I'm sure most of you have seen by now, but Giga Berlin may be getting final approval this Thursday or Friday. This is being reported by Der Tagesspiegel, and no, this is not set in stone just yet. However, it is very encouraging, so what do we know so far? Not only is final approval expected later this week, however, there is also a grand ceremony event that is being planned set to take place on March 22nd, or possibly it'll be delayed until March 23rd. Elon is set to fly in for this event and the Brandenburg police are preparing for this event with over 500 estimated invited guests and the delivery of the first 30 vehicles to customers is set to take place. Der Tagesspiegel is calling Giga Berlin the largest industrial and energy transition project in Germany and one of the most modern electric car factories in the world. I don't think you need to put in electric to that sentence, but just my two cents. This will of course be huge for other markets. The first one that comes to mind would be Australia. As Giga Berlin opens and ramps, this will alleviate some of the export pressure on Giga Shanghai that will allow them to export vehicles to other areas. And one thing I wanna add here is just be careful with your assumptions of why this approval is coming now. There's plenty of seemingly low hanging fruit that would make the case for why it's happening, but just be careful because we don't know that for sure. Some of these factors are Tesla announcing its expansion at Giga Shanghai, higher oil and gas prices, energy independence, and Germany changing its stance specifically for the Russia and Ukraine situation. Germany on Saturday reversed a historic policy of never sending weapons to conflict zones, saying the Russian invasion of Ukraine was an epical or significant moment that imperiled the entire post-World War II order across Europe. The German government will send 1,000 anti-tank weapons and 500 Stinger anti-aircraft defense systems to Ukraine. Pair this with Germany, in principle, allowing to remove its opposition to the EU and forcing a ban of Russia from Switzerland. Germany's foreign and economic minister said jointly, what we need is a targeted and functional limitation of SWIFT. And according to a government document today, Germany is now aiming to get 100% of energy from renewable sources by 2035, where previously the target was 2040. And so while many people are using these headlines as the reason approval is coming now, I don't think that's the case or it's that simple. The authorities in Berlin know that opening Giga Berlin is not going to solve these issues in the near term, and Giga Berlin already has been delayed now for nine months as it was set to open in July of last year. They're not going to rush through the final weeks in this process for a long-term solution that is Giga Berlin. And bear in mind, Giga Berlin will not be manufacturing energy storage right away. And yes, while the availability of EVs will be a great alternative for higher gas prices, the consumers that are going to be impacted the most by these higher gas prices are also unlikely to be buying a $70,000 vehicle. So my point here is be careful what you say or retweet for why this approval is likely happening this week. Either way though, very encouraging news and fingers crossed that this ultimately proves to be true. And this news is most likely one of the main drivers for Tesla stock performance today. And this was a very timely tweet from Al Root. Plenty of people have been asking the impact of higher oil prices at the pumps. He says, every $10 of crude oil works out to about 30 cents per gallon at the pump. Bear in mind, this is going to vary widely given your region. However, it's a good rule of thumb. Shifting gears, Tesla owners SV asked, hey Elon, any plans for YouTube TV app and a Tesla? I am a YouTube TV user and I definitely enjoy it. They replied, we can't speak for Elon, but you can help make it happen on our end. Share your thoughts using the YouTube TV app, go to profile picture and then send feedback. The Kilowatts got some video of the new Model S Plaid for customer delivery. S Plaid. So we've got the new taillights, the new charge port door, which we'll get to in a second. This is the new badge there. It's just one solid piece as opposed to being broken up like in the uh, initial event. Right now we've got a black applique. I don't know if this is going to be body colored. Uh, obviously, obviously here it is body colored, but black kind of crossbar here. Everything else looks pretty similar to what we've seen before. I'm looking for any other differences. Nothing appears different on the interior. Nothing different with the yoke. And then we'll go up to see the headlights. Whoa, these are very different, very cool looking headlights. So there is the new, new Model S Plaid. 
Now I'd like to stop and thank Incogni, the sponsor of today's video. So this is a service brought to us by Surfshark, a company that we should all be very familiar with. You may or may not be aware, but thousands of companies are collecting and selling your personal data online. Incogni will make them stop and remove your personal information from their databases. I'm actually dealing with this personally right now, so I'm building a website and now I am being flooded with calls and emails of people so kindly offering to build me a beautiful website. No thank you. These data brokers can get your information from online shopping, all of the different apps that you use, they can scrape the internet and public records, and honestly it's kind of sickening. Or perhaps you just signed up for a new newsletter and all of a sudden you're getting all kinds of spam from unknown senders. The good news is using Incogni is a breeze. You just create an account, tell them you want to remove your personal data, and then Incogni will contact these data brokers on your behalf and request your personal data be removed. Incogni handles all of the objections and requirements for you, saving you thousands of hours. Incogni has offered the first 100 electrified subscribers 20% off. So if you'd like Incogni to take care of this laborious process for you, just use the link in the description below and take back your privacy. Panasonic came out with a press release today and I think it gave me some clarity on what we can expect for 4680s out of both Japan and Giga Nevada. Panasonic announced its energy company will establish a production facility at its Wakayama factory in Western Japan to make new 4680 batteries. It notes currently Panasonic is developing a new high capacity lithium ion battery, the 4680, in multiple locations within Japan. This statement is crucial, remember this. The company will progressively develop production capabilities in preparation for the full rollout, along with structural improvements, two additional production lines, as well as utility facilities will be established at the Wakayama factory and productivity verification and mass production are set to begin in the fiscal year ending March, 2024. And if you're thinking to yourself, 2024, what's taking them so long? Two things, one, they say this is mass production, so we're talking scaled volume production of 4680s, and two, it's just a good reminder that doing this is very difficult, it's a brand new manufacturing process, so it's a huge challenge. Also, important to note, Tesla is not mentioned anywhere in this press release. These 4680s will presumably be going to Tesla first, however, they will also be delivered to other EV makers. Now, some very important context that will ultimately lead to this new clarity on what we can expect out of Giga Nevada and Japan. Back in 2020, Tesla moved away from its exclusive partnership with Panasonic for batteries as it expanded in Shanghai. Then Panasonic backed away from the chance to invest in the China factory, Giga Shanghai, amid concerns that it had tied its fortunes too closely to Tesla. And at the time, Panasonic was supplying Tesla's Shanghai Giga factory with batteries made in the United States. Fast forward to earlier this year, and we learned that the first deliveries of these new 4680s are going to be heading for Tesla. Panasonic began developing the 4680 battery cells on requests from Tesla. The Wakayama factory's annual production capacity is still under discussion, but the expectation is it will be around 10 gigawatts per year, or the equivalent of around 150,000 EVs. The company Panasonic has plans to expand mass production in plants in the United States or other countries. And this is where we'll land the plane. The company Panasonic will mass produce its latest power cells in Japan, where it has a large pool of skilled engineers. The company chose the plant in Wakayama because of its bitter experience with Gigafactory 1 or Giga Nevada. It was difficult to set up a new production line from scratch and around 350 engineers had to be sent from Japan. The Wakayama facility is close to Panasonic's EV battery manufacturing base and a senior official said it's a good place for us to check for bugs in mass production. So Dylan, what does all of this mean? Well, in my humble opinion, first it means that Panasonic 4680s for Tesla will mostly be developed and mass produced in Japan, not out of Giga Nevada, at least not to start. And while Panasonic is doing this for Tesla and the first batch will go to Tesla, Panasonic also understands its need to decouple itself from Tesla in the long run. And given that most of Panasonic's engineers are in Japan, it was very difficult to keep sending these engineers to Giga Nevada to try to start new production lines from scratch, which was ultimately very difficult. So in my opinion, 4680 development will only be in Japan at least for now. Moving on, I'd like to touch on this new note from Tony Sakanagi, specifically because Gary Black continues to hype him up for his detailed valuation models. 
First things first, his price target is 450 US dollars. This is a one year price target for Tesla stock. If we go back to the beginning of the video, you remember that candle where 700, there were some big strong buyers at the 700 level for Tesla, yet he's going another $250 lower one year from now. So we won't spend a lot of time here because it's ridiculous, but I just wanna point out a few things. This right here is a prime example of a Wall Street analyst not being able to decouple from their beloved models. They spend so much time and effort building these things that they can't zoom out and see the bigger picture, and there's certain things that Tesla is doing that just cannot be modeled. I mean, case in point, in his own note, he says, in fact, based on comparables with other high price growth stocks, Tesla's valuation is arguably not unreasonable. He says, despite the recent pullback, tech stock valuations are still elevated versus history and Tesla's growth comparables typically have much higher margins and are arguably less cyclical than automotive companies. And maybe it's just me, but I think these Wall Street analysts get tripped up trying to fit Tesla in these neat little buckets that historically many companies have operated in. The problem is Tesla literally needs its own bucket because they do so many different things. And lastly, and most absurd, listen to this. Through fundamental DCF analysis and comparisons to Uber and Lyft, we value other opportunities, robo taxis, energy storage, and insurance at around $100 per share collectively under optimistic assumptions. Look, ultimately, I don't care how detailed your model is or how the rest of the Wall Street analysts fawn over Tony's modeling prowess. Ultimately, the guy has been wrong about Tesla stock for years, and we're talking way wrong, not just by a little bit. And on top of that, to say that optimistically, robo taxis, energy storage, and insurance all combined will only add about $100 billion in valuation for Tesla is just completely absurd. Tesla is set to supply Megapacks for a 200 megawatt solar farm in the Mojave Desert in California. The Megapacks will be part of the Eland Solar and Storage Center. This project will feature two large scale solar facilities that will capture 400 megawatts of solar energy and include a 300 megawatt, 1200 megawatt hour energy storage facility. How do we know this? Under the record details, the applicant is Daniel Valdez of Tesla. Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti said that this entire Eland project will provide enough renewable energy to power 283,330 homes across the city. The first phase of the project is expected to be commissioned later this year and when complete will be one of the largest solar and storage projects in the US. Starting today, Tesla will be offering free supercharging for both Tesla and non-Tesla of vehicles in parts of Poland, Slovakia, and Hungary. And over the weekend, Elon said Starlink service is now active in Ukraine, more terminals en route. This is a big deal as many people in the area are reporting that they are without regular internet access. A fun fact here, Gruber Motors uploaded this video talking about the most recent sale of a Tesla Roadster going for well over $250,000, which would indeed be a new record. Presumably there are under 2,000 Roadsters still on the road today, so there's no doubt in my mind as time goes on, this will make for an excellent collector's item. Toyota said today it will shut down all 14 of its factories in Japan on Tuesday after one of its suppliers had an issue with its computer system. And Japanese factories represent about one third of Toyota's annual production. Lucid Motors will be reporting quarter four and fiscal year 2021 results today at 2.30 p.m. Pacific time. NIO announced it is planning a Hong Kong listing, so this will definitely reduce some of the fears of NIO being delisted from United States exchanges. NIO has the goal of trading to start around March 10th under the symbol 9866. And over the weekend, Stellantis admitted that making EVs is 40 to 50% more expensive than making ICE vehicles. And maybe even worse, Stellantis thinks it is 30% more efficient than the other traditional automakers in this space. Don't forget to check out Incogni, link below to take back your privacy. Please like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.